for Fidecurve. We are so happy for the third time we have back our guest host, Pete. Yay. Yay. Hi. Thanks Yay. for joining us. I'm proof yeah. that someone likes this show. Should be here. <laughs> <laughs> Pete picked this really great book called The Dinner that will make you feel really dirty after you read it. Good choice, Pete. Good choice. I'm drinking Old Tom Gin. Uh, Pete is drinking gin also, and what are you drinking, Josh? Old Granddad. Old Granddad. So Josh, what'd you think? what did I think of the book? Uh, I thought it was good. The protagonist was hard to get along with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but once you get past, you know, his deficiencies in narrating a novel, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe that was just the translation, you yeah, know, because it was originally true. in Dutch and they translated into like tens of languages or something so maybe it was really 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 good that's in its true. original form it probably would sound a lot happier in dutch <laughs> yeah i think a lot of things would sound a little happier in dutch yeah. early in the book i was thinking oh i don't know if i can spend this whole book with this narrator and it's not until you're a few chapters in you're like oh that's the whole point is mm -hmm. that you don't like this guy <laughs> but there's enough there's enough suspense that you just keep going and going and going, and the next thing you know, you've been sitting down for four hours and you're done. Yeah. Because it's True. just you get. Did you get sucked in, either of you? <clears throat> I got sucked in the last two days. I when totally it was crunch it. time. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a good book overall, but at the same time, I didn't. Like, it's really hard to explain. Like, we were just yeah. looking this up before we started filming, and New York Times bestseller, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the average New York Times bestseller gets for ratings <laughs> on like Amazon or Goodreads, but this has a uh, like three three and three two respectively. Like it's it's not super impressive. Yeah, so it sold a lot of copies in a lot of languages, and it seems to suck people in. Maybe just in the last two days, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's. It's so bad you can't look away, or it's so good you can't look away, or... I really thought the narrator. chemistry, the chemistry between, um, what's the main guy's name? Paul. Paul and his wife. Claire. Claire. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was enough to get me to read, because they had this interesting chemistry at the beginning, and the way he describes their relationship, mm -hmm. you know, like, she's smarter than me, and she she's never put that in my face, and all this, and you can tell there's a lot of kind of like old school machismo with him, but yeah. at the same time he's all like, well, she's smarter than me. So was, there was like a lot of like <clears throat> things that kind of didn't make sense, which kind of made him a deep character, which made you keep reading at the beginning. Because at the beginning, you're kind of focusing on their relationship. Mm -hmm. I was focusing on how much he hated his brother. Okay. That, that came through pretty quickly. His brother is a, some cabinet minister in, in uh, the Netherlands or whatever, and, uh, and um, I can't remember which position, but he just despises his brother. And I think by the end of the book, I, not even by the end of the book, by like 50 pages in, I despise the brother too. Like he was really good. So you, you got the relationship with Claire. I got the, I really don't like my brother. So. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't, yeah, I didn't like either of the brothers, but what? I would say that the politician came off at least as a little bit more sympathetic. Not much. More tactful. Yeah. Well, definitely that, although yeah. that wasn't hard to do. I mean, for the most part, all of the main characters were just total assholes. Yeah. Um, it's just, which one did you like the most? Yeah. So you liked Paul and Claire's relationship? Mm -hmm. Well, I loved Serge and, what is it? Babette. Babette? Yeah. Because he's just like, oh, it's menopause. That's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I, don't know. I just thought that was hilarious. She's disagreeing That's with all. me because of menopause, yeah. clearly. Uh, she's in a mood. Like, what? <laughs> also, I mean, like, staring at, you know, what did he describe him as? Like, pretty young things or something? Like, yeah. In front of his wife and bring it openly and, you know, ooh, Scarlett Johansson. You mm. know, that, that little, just like, think of everything you can say incorrectly in front of your girlfriend or wife. And... <laughs> it's in the book. It's yeah. all right there. <laughs> it makes me wonder what it would be like to have dinner with Herman Koch. Hmm. The author. Yeah. Uh, do you do you speak Dutch? No. Okay. You could have a translator. Hmm. I'm, I'm told things don't come through very well. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just don't use a lot of idioms, and you'll be funny. <laughs> So you, so you were taken by the the, the Paul Claire relationship. And well, especially you... the scene. Let, let's talk about Ooh. let's talk about like the killer scene for Paul and Claire, right? Mm -hmm. Paul and Claire. Mm -hmm. Paul and Claire. Mm -hmm. Yes, his name is Paul. His name, name is, is Michael. Mi <laughs> Michelle, I think probably. M I C H E L. Oh, right, right. Uh, uh, 
good call. So, so that English translation <laughs> was like, we'll make it sound. But the yeah. the scene where their son's on the news and they're both pretending that they don't know, but both of them know, but they don't know that the other one knows. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, Whoa! <laughs> I think it was Michelle just playing his parents against each other. That's it. Maybe. That's it. So we haven't said, but we haven't said at this point what sort of the big thing in this book was that the sort of crux that brings them together for the mean for the dinner. people in the audience who haven't actually read the book? Yes. Okay, guys. <laughs> here it is. Ten minutes in. These kids, Michelle and his cousin, whose name is... Oh, God. What? You have it in your notes. Rick? Rick! Yes. They pretty much set off this Mazel Tov cocktail, except they didn't call it a Mazel Tov cocktail. They <laughs> Mazel Tov it? cocktail? It was... <laughs> 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 what did I just do? <laughs> Molotov cocktail. Wait, what's it called? Molotov cocktail. No, Molotov. <laughs> I can't uh, believe I just said that. This, 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 this show is a rite of passage of some sort. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cocktail. That's awesome. I knew that one. I knew that one, by the way. Okay. Anyways, they didn't call it a Molotov cocktail. What'd they call it? Uh, is that the jerry can? No. Yeah, the, the, the jerry the, the can. The explosion. Yeah, okay. the jerry yeah, can. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they basically kill a homeless woman. Mm -hmm. Because they were inconvenienced and didn't want to go to a different ATM. Yeah, that's right. pretty much. And the syndrome, or whatever the, that the, fake the narrator syndrome. and the, <laughs> the kid have that's genetically passed that basically makes you really, really violent. Yeah. And I'm really confused. Basically, I go from being <laughs> just kind of an asshole to, <laughs> to a really violent asshole. Very quickly, I think I think it's in some places it's just known as having a really short fuse, but yeah. um, here I mean, it's, it's treatable with pills and hereditary. So I do kind of like the scenes where Paul remembers back to where his anger kind of flared up. Mm. I don't know, they were fun for me. Like when he beat the shit out of that uh, principal? teacher, principal yeah. guy, mm -hmm. yeah. his kid's principal, and, and as he's just yeah. story. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Dear and as he's dad. down, he looks out the window into the schoolyard and sees his kid yeah. down there. He's all like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to beating the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. I like the way it ended though with that creepy dear old dad. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. But they got the YouTube hammer, the band hammer. The video got pulled. Right. So that's mm. Well, probably because they got the password from Bo before they killed <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah, yeah exactly. Jeez. That's kind of weird. Yeah. They, so. they killed their brother, cousin person? Yeah. Well, yeah, their brother, cousin, adopted kid. Well, you don't, as I said to you once upon a time, this is why you don't try to extort sociopaths. It does it ends <laughs> badly for of you. The story. It, it's, it's not going to work out. So only two people died in the... I guess writing or reading of this book, but uh, only see that's how dark this book is. That you walk away going, only two people died. I like how the only person who actually gets punished is Claire, but she doesn't really get punished. Well, she gets arrested. Yeah, but Serge doesn't press charges. <laughs> oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, right. yeah. He's just left with a bunch of marks on his face. Yeah, ap apparently well, you can break a wine life. glass and cut somebody with it, <laughs> yeah. and so long as it's your brother-in-law, it's okay. It's all good. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, ready? ready? Random uh -oh. page selection <laughs> number one! Whenever I mentioned the anti-Dutch graffiti, they all shrugged it off. Juvenile delinquents was the verdict of the unemployed actress, while a copywriter who had sold his ad agency, unquote, lock, stock, and barrel in order to settle in Dodonia assured me that the slogan... Okay, so this is when they were... This is when um, Serge was in his, like, country property. Yeah, in France. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When those guys posted and in. And that's when kind of the paranoia, dark thoughts of um, the main guy. What's his name, Paul? Paul? Why, why, I keep forgetting that his name's Paul. Kind of come out because he's all like, don't they know that... Doesn't he realize that they're just taking his money and laughing at him and all this? And he just has this really twisted, evil look on everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, well what's Paul got? Realistic. He's a recovering <laughs> teacher. <laughs> recovering teacher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's taking a break from teaching our young impressionable minds. Yeah, exactly. Because he doesn't like to say things that are appropriate. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I didn't get... I don't understand, because uh, Serge was talking about withdrawing his candidacy, but how did he get convinced? His face got by his sister And that's what convinced him yep. that he should mm -hmm. still go? Okay. Because yep. he was mm -hmm. totally gonna... Well, he wasn't... No, no, it wasn't about his candidacy. He had already decided he was gonna step down. But he was gonna step down and come out about the whole thing. Um, gotcha. And that was not acceptable to the other party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or his wife. Or his wife. Well, hopefully it, it wasn't really clear to me if, if the wife was, you know, if it was the kid she was worried about or, Babette, or if she right just now? wanted him to still be in office. Yeah, Babette. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, she seemed like she really was there for the big political career. Uh, that's why she came off to me. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I think so that's anyways, accurate. it's three against one, but Serge is just so you know, big on himself. He thinks he gets to override these other three, but guess what? Claire says, no, not so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's, that, that's, that's with, so Claire, you know, you get, I think you get into this book and you start reading it and you're like, okay, the narrator's an asshole. Okay. Mm -hmm. The narrator's brother-in-law, Serge, is an asshole. But, but you have hope for the yeah, wives. Maybe okay. You have hope for the yeah, wives. And then the you wives. realize, no, all four of them. Claire may be like the worst one. Right. Because yeah. out of nowhere, she's just like... Yeah, remember, I, she's all like, you really need to take care of that. And he's like, no, they'll know I'm not on my pills. And she's like, okay, I'll cut a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> she was totally orchestrating it. She was like, no, you have to go across the street and go fuck up your brother. And then when he kind of had an argument about why that probably wouldn't be in the best interest of the family for him to do it, she's like, I'll take care of it. There you go. I am on it. I am on it? What? I'm on it. Oh, on it. On it. Yeah. I'm like, who the fuck is on it? <laughs> I'm having enough trouble remembering Paul. Oh. Well, maybe you're having trouble remembering Paul because his name only was used maybe, what, four times in the entire book? Right, because he's the narrator. It was like, what, yep. 10, 15 pages in before yeah. somebody yeah. refers to him by name. Yeah. Uh, Drink! Yeah, yeah. Yes, well. <laughs> hmm. Oh no, here was the question. So was it definitive that it was Claire who basically said to Michelle, you need to go kill Bo? Or did Michelle no, come up with the idea? You you really don't know if, yeah. if it was Michelle or it was Claire, but like you kind of feel like they were of two minds or the same mind. Mm -hmm. She know? definitely facilitated it um, through the well, whole, you know, stage phone calls and we'll be sure we're out from like seven to midnight. Oh yeah. Get it done. You yeah. know. Just just take care of it. And uh yeah. With the fake phone call. Oh, hi, honey. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. We'll go delete that message from the answering machine later. Yeah. 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 Well, exactly. That yeah. old trick. Yeah. Yeah. Who has <laughs> answering machines? I feel like there's really... The Dutch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, there really aren't a lot of definitive answers. I mean, there are, but they're not. A lot of things you kind of have to decipher on your own mm -hmm. through kind of context clues that the author gives. So I was a little confused a lot of times. For instance, you don't know what disease it is. And I think in his first flashback, Paul's, he finds like, what, Michelle, his phone, and it doesn't exactly say what he finds on the phone. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of weird instances like that we got, kind of got to gather what is actually going on. And what makes it more confusing is there were a few things that he does find on the phone, but I think right. there's one that you're right, we never really do know what yeah. it is. I think that's really what drives uh, you wanting to read more and more of the book. Well, I want to know what's yeah, exactly. going on. Well, what is going on? And you <laughs> want to figure out if he figures out how to work it properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to know if you can listen to you know your spouse's or kids' voicemails, exactly. but then have them appear as if they've never been listened to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, favorite so, part of the book, go peep. Ooh. ooh, favorite part of the book. Um, I think about 140 pages in when we find out what actually happened that they're at this dinner to discuss. It's like, okay, so I haven't read this far for no reason whatsoever. Um, you know, just, just sort of the reveal of, oh my god, this is this is why this family is, you know, you go into the book and like, it's okay, it's about a dinner, and you know, there's some flashbacks and whatnot, but you know, it's over the course of an evening, so to get halfway into it before it's like, oh, so this is what's going on. That was, I think that but, was a favorite the first time yeah. I read it anyway, so. Yeah. I mean, 
you're so, I, I mean, you call it the big reveal, but I kind of feel like by that point, you know something really dark's happening. You know? Well, you just don't yeah. know what it is. Oh, yeah, and I think maybe it's the darkness that pulls people into this so easily. Mm. Like, why it's got bestseller, it's sold so many copies, but it's poorly reviewed. I guess we all have a dark side, but we're not willing to give it, like, you know, five <laughs> out of five when we review it. Yeah. Because we're like, okay, that means we're a sociopath, too. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this book, but it was too dark. Three. I give it a three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It made me realize things about myself. Mm -hmm. We can't have that. Oh. But that only happens when I'm driving, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the favorite part of the book was for me. I mean, there's a lot. I like when he beats up the principal over mm. capital punishment. Yeah. I think that's ironic and hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll probably go with that. Okay. Because I think there's like a direct quote that he reads from the essay. It's like, sometimes someone has to take something into their own hands. And then Paul just goes insane. Right. Yeah, it's the crap out of the principle. And I was yeah. like, so why did they name it Men in Black 3? I don't know, because Bo is weird. <laughs> like, okay. I, I, keep in, keep I in mind, the guy who wrote about on YouTube was the guy who was trying to extort these sociopaths. True. And, uh, well, one of them anyway, plus the Stooge, which was Rick. But, uh, yeah, why Why did he? Who knows? And know. we can't ask him now. No. And Wait, I think what's the question? Would be why they named uh, the YouTube clip Men in Black. Men in Black. Because they're punk ass kids. That's why. Okay. But Men in Black so the, 3 was already out when this book was published. So there's. <laughs> so, yeah. Buyer behavior. I don't know if you guys have ever taken a buyer behavior class. Mm -hmm. I did once upon a time. But it, it kind of talks about those things about, like, for example, if someone orders the same thing you do, why you want to change your order? Right? Well, have mm -hmm. you ever experienced that, either one of you? I experienced that yeah. on Thursday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyways. So I think this is the narrator. Whatever the case, I had settled on the Vitello Tonato, but Babette, to my horror, ordered exactly the same thing. So I think this is kind of a cool thing. It just shows how ordinary they are on some levels, because we all mm -hmm. experience that. But then, obviously, there are things about their lives that not so ordinary. Yeah, but wasn't he teetering on the brink of like flying into one of these crazy rages just over the, the buyer <laughs> behavior thing? <laughs> like, to my horror! It says, to my horror! Not, oh no. shoot, to my horror! Okay, least favorite character. Ooh. Anyone? Anyone? Bad bet, because she, she isn't as, um, she isn't as lively and out there as the other tool. three. And that's, I mean, that's more because of how the author portrayed her. She just didn't get a lot of screen time, right? Mm -hmm. you, we know that she just found out about the whole thing. She was the last to know. She found out en route to the dinner. Mm -hmm. She was the last to know. So she's kind of a, what, what's the word? Um, you know, when somebody... Third wheel? Only like the fifth in this case? Or... I'll think of the word later, but um, she, you know, you're just not really impressed with her. It's like, really? You're the last to know? And like, not by a little, like by a lot, mm -hmm. like you're that out of it. And you're crying, and it's why are you crying? Are you crying because you don't get to be a politician's wife? Are you crying because your kid's implicated in something? Like, and we never get a lot of depth to her. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel bad saying I that she's my least favorite character, because it's probably just because... We didn't get a lot of depth, but did we not get a lot of depth because maybe there wasn't a lot of depth to be had? Like, I don't know what Coke's intention was, but hmm. what do you guys think? I don't know. About my least favorite character? Or about or Babette? About Babette. <laughs> about Babette. Like, uh, was she shallow? Like, was she not shallow, but was she too, of her character was she was too dimensional? Mm. Yes. <laughs> It might have been 3D, but you know, very small in one of the one of the dimensions. It's kind of like you said. You know, there just wasn't a whole lot of depth to her, and you know, I, I she was not my least favorite character at all. Um, but she was near the bottom. So, okay. But and, and, and she played the role she needed to play. Well, who was your favorite character? My favorite character. Oh God, why would you ask that? Um, who was your favorite? I know out of so all, so all let's, let's out, out of all these horrible people, Pete, who was your favorite <laughs> character? The manager. 
hated that guy. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> he got put off at the end. Yeah. Yeah. He's got no backbone. I, 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 He'd I, be I, perfect I, for Babette. That's all I was saying. I am kidding. I, 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 I can't really name a favorite because... Because they were all assholes? Yes. Yeah? Hmm. I don't know. Ooh, favorite. Look at the photographer's <laughs> hand, oh. and hopefully that is in frame at the moment. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. I have, mm. I have every confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Least favorite for you, Josh? Least favorite? Oh man, I think Paul is my least favorite. Mm. It's close between Paul and Michelle. Mm. But mm. I, I, I think. Paul's my least favorite because he's complaining about like the crappy service the whole time while they're supposed to be talking about a murder that their sons committed. And then didn't one of the servers like hit Claire in the back of the head with the wine bottle and they were pouring her a glass? Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of weird sure. things that yeah. he notices and it's like there's more important things to talk about and to observe than <laughs> yeah. shitty service. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe it just shows kind of how compartmentalized he is when it comes to like the all the things going on in the book. But maybe this is the author's writing style or the approach to, you know, when you do get 140 pages in for the book, you're like, oh, thank God, something not trivial <laughs> is happening now. I'm going to keep reading. Random page selection number three. <laughs> the man with the beard was drying his hands. I pulled up my zipper. Don't stop! Keep reading! Keep reading! <laughs> He's got a beard. Pull my clear zipper up. As a sign that I was finished peeing, even though it had produced no sound and made Oh that's right! There's this couple, but it's not a couple. It's a dad and a kid. But Paul thinks it's a it's a gentleman and a much younger woman. I believe the quote was objectionably younger girl. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy is so judgmental. 15. He has no idea who these people are, and he's just got like stories written about them and why he hates them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do, do the two of you and <laughs> Bill do you, do you guys not go through life like this too? <laughs> is this not like? Wait. Do you? This is normal. Do you totally normal? relate to Paul? You totally relate to Paul. I think we all relate to Paul on some level. Yeah. Way to deflect Pete. Good job. Mm. I don't know. Maybe it's Paul's sick. just, just when you boil it all down, other than the whole weird violent tendency syndrome thing, maybe he's just really cynical. You know? Okay, so I really okay, so I like I like fancy food. So when they were talking about the little <laughs> The little plates and the everything, I, and and Paul was. I'm gonna to point to you because, like, obviously you're Paul. Paul. <laughs> These guys are Paul group hostels. Yeah. And Paul was complaining about it. I was like, oh, I dig that. That smells good. I like it. <laughs> did you just so crack your knuckles? I did. Why? It sounds like you're hurting your body when you I'm do that. I'm looking at one of Paul's aggressive uh, <laughs> <sessions. laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah. Or no, no. <laughs> the bike dealer had called me a good mm -hmm. man, and maybe I looked like one, but I was not a good man. <gasps> he was a perfectly good man until he <laughs> flew into his threatening, potentially very violent rage when his kid was like eight. <laughs> I mean, these are not the examples we set for our children. I wouldn't know because I don't have kids, but... Dear old dad. Do you remember that? Like, he says it three <laughs> times in the book. Dear... And that's how the book ends. Mm -hmm. With his arms around his dad going, Dear old dad. Your, your, your syndrome is so endearing and cute. I love you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really the longer version of dear old dad. <laughs> right. Christina didn't believe me. She thought I was referencing an entirely different book, but every review said the Wall Street Journal quoted this book as a European gone girl. See, I do not get that. That's why I didn't believe them. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I don't think the Wall Street Journal reads books. <laughs> well, it's really what it was. I've never read Gone Girl, so I don't know what the hell they're talking about. You didn't read Gone Girl? What? Oh my god, no. that was so good. We did, we did Gone you, Girl. We did, did Gone Girl. Mm. Uh. <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. Ready, 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 ready. ready. So, Random page last selection number four. And we're in that part of France again with their summer home. Are we? No, 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 no. We couldn't be. <laughs> oh, no, you did, you did good. Okay, this is good. This is good. 
Right. So does Serge. I yeah. need to stay calm, I told myself. I had to listen. I remembered now that Michelle had said I wasn't listening. Okay, I'm all ears, I said. He shook his head again. Then he pulled his bike resolutely from the rack. Oh, this is when they're talking in the back of the reference. Uh, in front, back of the ref, re, in the, the restaurant. restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Words are hard when you're drunk. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute, I said. I kept holding myself. I even stepped to one side as though I didn't want to get in his way. But before I knew it, I had my hand on his forearm. Because nobody f Okay. My, Michelle looked at the hand as though some strange insect had landed on his arm. Then he looked at me. At that point, we were very close to something, I realized. Something that couldn't be undone later on. I took my hands off his arm. Michelle, there's something else, I said. Dad, please. Someone called you. He stared at me. It wouldn't have surprised me much to have felt his fist in my face a moment later, his knuckles hard against my upper lip or higher against my nose. Blood would flow, but it would make a number of things clearer, more out in the open. But nothing happened. So you just did a random page selection. Yeah, should I do another one? <laughs> Probably. You want me to! You want me to! We, need at least we didn't really 15. discuss the one we just did. We just sort of diverted. What about how, how the dad was all like, I knew we were at something that couldn't be undone, and then the dad actually backed off. See, that was telling. The dad backed off. The dad doesn't back off a lot, but when it has to do with his son, mm -hmm. he backed off. <laughs> He backed up. I think it was Claire a little space, too. Well, Claire. yeah, he loves yeah. Claire. He I loves mean, Claire. Yeah, his wife and kid are probably the only two people in the world he wouldn't mercilessly hurt. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. For as violent as this guy was, never laid a hand on his wife or kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, we, I, I think we've used the word sociopath a couple of times Because you but, don't try to extort sociopaths. But at the same time, I mean, he... He seems to have at least a little bit of empathy, or... No. No? No. 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 Okay. Oh, never mind. 